Most of my videos are really for beginners with very simple techniques, but for my own army, I usually go a little bit further. So let me show you how I'm painting my Grimdark Custodes in sort of worn brass bronze. First of all, here's a warden, spray painted black, and I'm gonna use some Warplock bronze to dry brush all over him. And I'm applying a quick layer. I don't care too much if it doesn't hit all the recesses. That is part of the dry brushing principle. You just try to hit the upper parts. And I go all, all over the mini, and I also don't care if I hit parts that I don't want to look like bronze later on, like this cloak that he's wearing, or his plume, all of that, it's fine if it gets a little layer. Uh, I'm gonna paint over it later anyway, and fix all of this up. So, first a layer of Warplock bronze everywhere. And then a quick dry brush of Balthasar gold all over the model. And I'm just trying to highlight here so I don't go as heavy as I did with the Warplock bronze. I don't have to cover over the black. I just want to give it a slight highlight. Uh, this step is sort of the last step I'll do on the armor for now because I have to paint all the other stuff before we start washing and griming him up and getting to the finished product. So like I said, that's it for the armor for now because I'm gonna first finish everything else on the mini so that then I can grime and make everything dirty at the same time. That way you get a more tied together miniature and it's just a lot faster too. So now the cloth first and I'm using Phoenician purple here. This is a very, very bright, nice purple. And it's perfect for this purpose because I need bright colors so that I can then dirty it down a bit. And it will save me the hassle of having to highlight afterwards. And this way you have a very bright color to start with and then darken it down a bit. And you don't really need to highlight after that. And then I highlight the purple with some Emperor's Children, a beautiful bright pink color. And I'm just dry brushing. I'm just making sure I hit all these edges that are sticking out and definitely also the edge, actual edge of the cloak. And I do the same with the plume on his head and the gloves, sort of the, those braces that he has. And this will give it a very rough highlight. And I like the rough look that you get with the dry brushing. I don't go for smooth highlights. I think this way it makes the cloth look a lot more worn. And it's also a nice contrast of having the cloth next to the shiny metal. You'll get different textures on your miniature this way. And it's an easy way to work. You don't have to do edge highlighting. You don't have to work on nice transitions. This way you will get a highlight and you'll be really quick with this. So that's the end of the cloth. I don't have to touch it anymore until I start washing the whole model with grime. And it's time for the next step. The greenish bits that you see on the finished miniature over here. And it takes a few steps to get to that. And it won't really look like this finished product until the very last step. So stick with me here. We'll go through all of them and you'll see the final result. So here I got the shoulder pad and I'm using silver here. This is just stormost silver and I'm sort of stippling it on. What I'm trying to achieve here is that it's mostly covered in silver, but it looks like there's some silver chipped off. Uh, that way you get a nice rough looking uh, shoulder pad and it'll look like it's been damaged. And if you don't like this sort of chipping effect, you can of course paint it completely silver, but I don't think you'll get the same nice effect. Now it takes some time doing the silver parts, but it is worth it in the end. I'll show you how it looks like here on a miniature that I was working on. You can see I did the shoulder pads, this part around his helmet. I did some parts here on the legs as well. And that's about it. All the gems I also picked out with silver. And I figured I'd show you guys what it looks like on a slightly bigger surface. So here's my Venatari. And you can see the wing here. You can see that I've left quite a lot of these black spots unpainted. And here's a Vexilla that I'll show you as well. Again, it looks really chipped and this is the sort of effect you should go for on bigger surfaces. Shields work like this too. And now it's time to turn this silver into something slightly bluish. And for that I have contrast ethermatic blue and I'm going to apply that it's just a thin layer over all of the silver that I just painted except of course the gems. I'm leaving those silver. And don't put too much on here. You want to make sure there's just enough on it to make it slightly bluish shine and not too much. I'm just gonna pick out a few details with Retributor armor. For example, this little charm he has hanging off his spear gets a layer. And since this guy doesn't have a lot of these details, I'm gonna just look for stuff like the handle of his Misericordia. Why not also paint this Retributor armor? Just to have a little bit more color in here. Otherwise, it's just gonna be dark brown with purple and with this gold, you just break it up a little bit more. Okay, and now it's time to turn this guy here into that guy there 
in literally two steps. I'm going to use Streaking Grime, which is often called Grimdark in a pot, and it's really that good. You just get some of the Streaking Grime and go all over the miniature with it. And this will make him look dirty, but it will also discolor his armor and especially the Ethematic Blue a lot. See, Streaking Grime is a bit greenish, so if you go over it like this, it will turn it from the Ethematic Blue to more of a green glass color. Whoops, okay, he lost his shoulder pad. Let's look at this one instead then. So over here, go over it, and now it starts to look like this elven glass effect that I really like on my Custodes. And yeah, you could skip this step. You could leave it out and sort of work on the brighter paint scheme that you had before, but that's just not my style. I like my guys to look dirty and grimy and rough and as if they've been fighting for 10,000 years already. Now, while the streaking grime is still wet, I'm getting some white spirits and I'm going to reduce it, especially on the cloak and the plume he has. I want the purple to be still relatively bright. So with a bit of white spirits, you can just wash off the streaking grime and then wipe off your brush on a piece of paper. And that way you can reduce the amount that's on there. This is the great stuff about using enamels. They are more pliable than acrylic paints. You can work with them like this, reduce, add more, reduce again until you get exactly what you want. And the good thing is you don't have to do this while it's wet. You can leave it to dry and even after it's dried, use some white spirits to work with it. So the streaking grime is completely dry and all the white spirits have dried up. It's time for a little dry brush because he's very, very dark right now. If you put him on the tabletop like this, you can look from a distance and it will just look like a brown little turd on the table. So here I got some Auric Armor Gold, which is probably the worst gold paint you can have, but it is great for this purpose. It's really not suited for painting bits of armor or larger panels, but it's great for giving a little bit of a dry brush all over the model because it will just hit the edges, all the trim, and it will make it all shine just a little bit gold and make him look exactly as if he's just come from golden light to bring the emperor's blessing to whatever heretic he's facing. And I'm going all over the mini with this and I'm not worrying too much if I hit the green parts here. It's fine, it will get a little gold shine, a little glimmer in there and I don't mind too much. It might actually be a nice addition to the elven glass. But just make sure you don't hit the purple parts. Don't hit the cloak, don't hit the gloves if you can help it. Now for the spear, I'm gonna stay with gold, but a slightly different gold. I'm gonna use Gehenna's gold, which is more orange. And you could use Retributor armor here if you don't wanna buy an adult paint, but I think Gehenna's gold has a much nicer effect because it becomes much more orange, much darker, and not so bright yellow as you do with Retributor armor. And I think this is a good base, and then we'll dry brush it a little bit to give it a bit of an edge and then you'll have a nice golden spears. Now he's almost done, but I'm gonna do the base first because I like to have the base in place when I add blood effects because then I can tell a little story and paint some blood on the base as well. Make it look as if blood is dripping down from his ax. And I'm gonna show you how to make the easiest zero scale marble bases. Here I've got a sticker and it comes in these very big rolls that you can get from pretty much any DIY store. And people use it to cover their shelves and make them look like marble. And I have them in black, but not just black. I got white as well. And both of them look okay. I like black more because I like the darker base on my custodes. But here's how it works. You just get a piece and with a hobby knife, cut out a small part that's big enough for the 40 millimeter base that the custodes have to be on. And then you just stick it on there like this. Make sure it is really stuck on there. And then we start cutting off bits and pieces. So I'm just gonna go roughly around. I'm not touching the base. I'm just cutting off parts here. And this will make it easier to work with in the next step when I trim the base really close. So cut off as much as possible. And while I'm doing this, I'm keeping good pressure on the sticker, on the base, because I wanna make sure it sticks really well to the base. Because next up, I'm gonna turn it over and let's get the knife clean. Now, I'm gonna put the knife touching the base and I'm gonna scrape it off along the base. And that way you'll get a nice smooth looking base that is made out of marble. And 
of course after this you can do with it what you like you can make it grimy you can add a skull i don't know tentacles growing out of the marble however you want and you could even if you really want to go the distance cut the sticker into little square pieces and make a sort of marble tile out of it just make sure that the sticker really sticks and if you're not that comfortable with the sticker you could always add a little bit of super glue and then for sure the sticker will stay on the base now there's one issue here uh, because you use the sticker it's no longer a plastic base and that means you can't use plastic glue to glue the miniature to the base you need to use super glue not really an issue but it means that the bond is usually not as strong as when you would use plastic glue it doesn't melt together but Let's get the guy on there and then we'll do some gore and other effects. And now to give the edge of the blade a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to use some silver and I'm just lightly dry brushing here. And I make sure I hit the edge and then dry brush a little bit onto the gold, but not too much. This is enough. And make sure that this edge definitely is completely silver. And then do the other side. And finally, time for some of the blood and gore effects. And I like to use zombie gore. That is a paint from Duncan Rhodes' Two Thin Coats line. And it's slightly darker than Blood for the Blood God. So it makes it look a little bit older as if the blood is already drying up. Now, if you don't have this paint, you can just use Blood for the Blood God or add blood, a little bit of black to Blood for the Blood God and you get a darker blood color. So I'm using a pretty old, nasty little dry brush. And first I like to get the weapon done and I'm just moving the brush against the blade trying to make sure that the blood streaks kind of look like they were flying in the direction against the blade that not the same way that way so then blood usually trickles down so it makes sense that there's a bunch on the on the weapon and let's see there's some blood spatter here onto the shoulder pad too and just work your way across the model dab on little bits of blood add some to the base that's why we do the base first before this, because it will tell a little bit of a story. Like that. he's been in combat for a while. He's not just standing in the throne room for 10,000 years. This guy has been away. And that's our custodian warden done in a nice grim dark alternative paint scheme. I am going to work on gold at some point as well, but I wanted to show you guys how I paint my army first. And if you like this sort of video, let me know in the comments what sort of paint scheme you would like to see. Could be custodians, could be something else. You want to see the classic gold and red banners? I can do that too, but then in a sort of grimdark style. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe check out this video as well.